Automatism is the act of creating something without thinking about it. You can paint, you can draw, you can write, but you're not really thinking about it. You're using your intuition. Then we're going to pair that with pareidolia. And pareidolia is where you see something that doesn't exist in a pattern or let's say a good example would be looking up at the sky and saying, oh, look, I see a ship or I see a dragon. That is a really simple form of pareidolia. But there are many, many artists that do pareidolia as how they do their work. They will just lay down different mediums in general and then go in and search for the faces or the animals or the shapes. It doesn't really have to be a thing. It could be anything. So this would be a great example of pareidolia. I went ahead and was testing these watercolors and I was mixing them over here and then I gave this to my partner and he went and drew these faces with this, these wings and that is a form of pareidolia. Automatic drawing, this is a good example of that. So I just went in and did a bunch of lines and then came in over top of it and just intuitively went through the process of adding different types of patterns or textures just because it was what I felt like doing intuitively. This may not look like, or this might not look like high-end amazing art, but that's not the point here. The point of creating something like this is to allow your mind to be free for you to just enjoy the process and for you not to have any sort of judgment about what you are doing. This is mark making where you're being more intentional about the marks. I have a video about this. I'll make sure that I link it down below as well as a blog. And this is neurographic art. Neurographic art is a form of automatic art. It just has its own kind of flow where you're drawing lines and then you're filling things in. I also have a video on this. People love this so much on our blog and also the video has gotten a lot of attention and a lot of shares on different other blogs. So you should look up neurographic art. It's actually very soothing. Today, we are going to work with no direction. I'm also going to share with you some information about the history of automatic art and we're going to jump right in. The tools that you will need for this if you want to join me for this adventure is pretty much anything and everything that you might want to use. For me, I'm planning on using these granulating Schmincke watercolors, these Horadam watercolors. We have galaxy pink here, we have indigo, uh, deep sea indigo, and then we have a forest brown which is really green. I also have some pens to do some line work. I have some Karen Dash here, Neo Color Ones. If you don't know much about this, there's Neo Color Ones and Neo Color Two. They are like a crayon, but they have a lot more pigment. They are just absolutely beautiful by an amazing maker of quality art products. Neo Color One is not dissolvable. So for example, with this white, if you wanted to use this as a resist, if you're doing watercolor, instead of using masking fluid, you could always use a white and go over the paper and that would keep the medium off of that area. And then there's Neo Color 2, which are water soluble crayons and they're just beautiful. So we're going to be using the non soluble crayons. I have myself here a palette with dog hair on it as per usual. I feel like half my videos I'm cleaning off dog hair, even after I clean it when I set up. I do vacuum my house, but I have very hairy dogs. And I have myself a piece of watercolor paper. This is Saunders Waterford, which is my favorite. And I'm gonna go ahead and tape this down. So I'm gonna start the process and I'm gonna do this for probably about 10 minutes and you can follow along and do your own thing. And during that time, I'm gonna teach you a little bit more about the history and then we're gonna see what happens at the end. In art, automatism refers to creating art without conscious thought, accessing material from the unconscious mind 
as part of the creative process. Automatism is a term that is borrowed from physiology, where it describes bodily movements that are not consciously controlled, like breathing or sleepwalking. Psychoanalysis Sigmund Freud used free association and automatic drawing or writing to explore the unconscious mind of his patients. Freud's ideas strongly influenced French poet André Breton, who launched the Surrealist movement in 1924 with the publication of the Manifesto of Surrealism. In the Manifesto, Breton defined Surrealism as pure psychic automatism, the dictation of thought in the absence of all control exercised by reason and outside all moral and aesthetic concerns. Breton and others produced the earliest examples of automatism in their automatic writings, aiming to write as rapidly as possible without intervening consciously to guide one's hand. So that would mean you would take out a piece of paper and you would just free associate anything and everything that was coming out of your mind and just write it down. You wouldn't be trying to think about putting periods in or spelling things right. You just write as quickly as possible. And it's always interesting and fun to check it out when you're done and read it because you are always going to be surprised what came out on paper. And that's the same with automatic art as well. So surrealists that did collage, put together images, clip from magazines, product catalogs, book illustrations, and other sources. And this was invented by Max Ernst and was the first form of automatism in visual art. Ernst also used frottage, which is rubbing, and grittage, which is scraping, to create chance textures in his work. Various forms of automatic drawing and painting were developed by artists such as Joan Miro and André Masson, as well as Ernst. Later, automatism played some part in the abstract expressionism of Jackson Pollock and others, and was an important element in the European movement of art informel and art nucléaire. While the term automatism is specifically associated with 20th century artists, and particularly surrealism, earlier artists such as Alexander Cosens used some of these elements by chance in the work that they created, while others reportedly tapped into visionaries or trance states. So in this project that we are doing, we are calling back to that movement and those artists and we're tapping into our own intuitive nature in creativity. Because when we are creative, often we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and we expect a certain type of outcome. But this type of expression, when we're learning to be automatic, we're learning to be in the presence, we're learning to be in the process, it actually creates a very interesting element to your art that you may be able to bring into other parts of your creative life, whether or not it's writing or it is creating art. Now we are done with the automatic part of this project. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to bring in the pareidolia. All right, so I am going to grab these little ears out here and There's a face, you see his little arm here, and a little arm there, and the bottom part of the body, and the little little tail. And got the little teeny tiny hands. And in that, you can just leave the drawing as it is, or you can come in and add more things to it. You can come in 
and improve it by adding features that you like to make it look maybe more like what you saw. This is literally one of my most favorite things to do. If I'm feeling stressed out or I'm just generally needing to just relax. Like some people might go for runs and that's awesome too. But this is to me a very big stress reliever. Don't forget you can add back some of the things that you had used before. So if you enjoyed some of the paint you had used, don't feel limited or feel like you have to use a certain type or a certain thing, or don't use the exact same thing you used before. I don't know, it's funny to me. I think that's one of the reasons why it's so exciting. It's because it's generally just most of the time humorous. And I don't know if you are like me, but I always love little creatures. And I feel like these creatures pop up that I would never normally think of. Like this is not something I would generally be thinking of in my life. All right, so that is an example of automatic drawing mixed with pareidolia. Feel free to continue to experiment with this on your own. Use any and all types of art supplies because you will enjoy the exploration. Also, as a benefit, you will also pick up things that you really like. And you can apply that if you are an artist to other things you're doing. For example, I really loved laying down that blue and then putting watercolor over it and getting that texture. It was really beautiful. I also enjoyed mixing these two Schmincke colors, this um, galaxy pink and that forest brown. I thought they were a great mix. So in my artwork, I probably will use that in the future. This will free you up, teach you new things, and generally probably make you giggle because it's a lot of fun. And lastly, let's go ahead and peel off the tape. If you enjoy videos like this, enjoy hanging out with me, enjoy learning about new things, new tools, new techniques, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you again in another video.